Hi, I'm Ian Dennison, Equipment Specialist at GF Strong Rehab Centre and I'm here today to talk about uh, tyres and wheels on wheelchairs. Uh, here we have a uh, not unusual wheelchair wheel and what you might notice from this uh, being unusual is that the valve isn't sticking perpendicularly out of the uh, uh, wheelchair rim. And it's important that that be perpendicular to take any strain off the inner part of the, on this edge of the valve and reduce the likelihood of a flat. So if this is a situation that you find yourself in, let the air out of your tyres. And then push the bead of the tyre away from the rim. So sometimes they kind of get stuck. And all the way around. Good. All right. Now, you see it's still pointing away, so I want the tyre to move this way on the rim and drag the tube with me. I'm going to change hands because I'm right handed. To get it perpendicular again. And you might take a couple of loops and you have to make sure that you've got no air in the tube. Because you're overcoming friction all the way around and it's a little bit difficult. I may have a little bit too much residual there and I'm just going to see if I can get any more out. Yeah, okay, you see I'm already there so now I'm just going to make sure I haven't got too much tension on anywhere. Alright, valve's perpendicular. We're going to be less likely to have a uh, uh, flap from a pinch and you can just put air back in the tyre. However, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to show you how to uh, fix a flat tyre. So let's assume that we got a puncture and punctures happen in, typically in two ways. There's either penetration by a sharp object or if your tyres are too flat um, uh, you, and you hit a kerb or an obstacle like that, you get what's called a snake bite flat. A snake bite flat where the, the tire compresses against the hard object and you get two puncture wounds um, uh, from the object hitting the rim through the tire. Alright, so I like to start at the valve because I can push the valve in to the far side of the tire and that will protect my tube from my tire iron when it goes in. So I push the valve in, push the tire iron underneath and then these little tabs, these little notches allow you to um, do it hands free. Work your way along, not too far, try and avoid the tube, same thing. Now typically you get two of these in a set, it's always nice to have a third one because oftentimes by the, by the time you've done the third one you can actually just go around. So make sure you don't have the uh, tube in there and then you can work your way around. And use the irons as little as possible. You really want to use your hands as much as you can because your hands aren't going to give yourself a second flat. So pull the rim bead off of the, the, the tire bead off the rim, push the valve in and then you can pull the tube out. Now yeah. All right, so now we need a little bit of air in there. Because we have to find out where the flat is. Now, typically speaking, I would recommend that you replace the tube. I wouldn't patch it because is quite fiddly. If you don't get it right, you can have another flat, 
and a tube only costs five to ten dollars. I know it's easy to say only. If you haven't got the money, you have to do a patch job. But even if you are replacing the tire, it's still worth finding out where the hole was, and I'll tell you why in a second. So I've got a little bit of air in, well, quite a lot of air in there. You obviously can't go up to 110 because you haven't got the carcass of the tire straining the uh, expansion of the tube. So feel for the for the uh, hole if you can. Holding it close to your face will help you find it because you, your face is very sensitive and you can hear the air escaping. If none of that works, you submerge it in water and find where the bubbles are coming from. Um, if the tire's gone f pretty flat before you get to the water, put some more air in and uh, work your way around. And always rub your hands in the bowl. So if this is my bowl of water, work your hands like this because the surface tension of the dust and everything like that keeps the tube dry if you're not careful. So you need to keep, make sure that the tube stays completely wet to be able to identify where the, where the leak is. Once you've identified where the leak is, then get your, find your pen and mark on the tube where the leak is. All right. Don't assume that that's the only one. Keep on going until you find that it's the only one or find the other one. And then, especially if it's on the outside of the tube, uh, it, or it's uh, indicating a penetration injury, you want to put the valve level with the hole, find out where that puncture is, and then check the inside of the tire to see whether there's any still remaining sharp objects embedded in the tyre and then just in case you rotated it around it's a good chance you have do it the other way and make sure there's nothing there and then it's good practice to check the entire um, circumference of the tyre uh, being careful to uh, watch out for sharp objects with your fingers so don't be rough with this you can hurt yourself quite easily alright so Hopefully this is a new tube or a patch one. I'm not going to show you how to patch it because I don't particularly recommend it. The consequences of a subsequent flight are just too, too uh, dire. Alright, so I'm going to let a little bit of air out. I just need enough air to maintain the shape of the tube. And push this into the tyre and seat the valve. And to save us from having to do what I did initially, Make sure that valve comes out perpendicular. If you've got too much air, let's them out. Looks like it's not going to fit. Very well. Distant, got to let a bit more air out because I'm fighting it. Still more. All right, so the valve's coming out perpendicular, and I'm going to finish at the valve. I like to finish at the valve because. So my valve was kind of, I'll just show you now. The valve is pointing across a little bit, it's not coming out perpendicular, so figure out what you need to do, and then adjust it by pulling on the tire to get it coming out straight. All right, so now I'm gonna put the bead of the tire in, making sure I've gotten the inner tube in. If I'm struggling with the inner tube because it's trying to find me to pop out, I need to uh, let some air out. If it's not holding its shape, I need to put some air in. Right, so again, you don't want to use tire irons for this, but you want to use your hands if you possibly can. Sometimes dusting powder will help to uh, allow the tube not to grab the uh, aluminum push rail. 
So I'm using my fingers to push the tube in, making sure it's not pinching there. It's a good time to use your tongue, it really helps. Right, so I'm trying to do this symmetrically so I end up at the valve. No cheap pinches. I'm trying to show you what's going on there. Right, so I'm getting closer, closer, both sides. Make sure the tube's in there. It's not catastrophic at the moment if you pinch the tube, because you haven't got a lot of pressure on it and you haven't used the hard iron. So I'm getting close. It's getting harder to do now. I might be able to force it over. I don't want to. So what I'm going to do now is just seat the bead of the tire, that's the edge of the tire, as deep into the well as I can and push it this way. So I've got a round wheel and I want to kind of have an oval tire so that it's more at this end, it's shorter at that end and longer at this end, which is going to allow me to pull this over a lot easier. Right? So without using the tire irons, I'm actually able to get this on. And hopefully I haven't pinched the, pinched the um, tube. Now, because I've kind of sat this in deep, I now have to push it back again because I don't want an oval tire on a round wheel. I want a round tire on a round wheel. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to push the, the tire away from the wall so I can see whether my tube's pinched or not. And this also allows it to kind of seat itself. So I'm looking all the way around, make sure there's no inner tube visible. On both sides. Something I forgot to mention actually, I wonder if you can see, yeah, okay. I forgot to mention this and I'm going to show you now. Can you see the um, tape? When you have the tire, the tube out and the tire half off, inspect the tape to make sure that it's intact and those uh, nipples from the spokes are not protruding and could be a potential cause of um, another flat, okay? So, make sure you check your tape while you have the tire off. All right, so I'm fairly confident that we're good there. I'm gonna put some air in it. And as, as I pointed out before, you have to compress the tire on the other side to make sure that the uh, adapter goes on. And if the air's going in, you got it on good. So I'm gonna put it on the floor so I'm not working too hard. Okay, so a couple of things to check. The valve's perpendicular. Put your valve cap on. And also, there's a little bead around the tire that should be equidistant from the wheel rim all the way around. Can you see that? It's just a molded thing, it's not a colour. And you can see that in this case it's all the way around equidistant. So that means the tire is seated properly on the rim and then you do the same thing on the other side. And we're good. So that's that.